Hi, welcome to Max8 tutorial number 27, JIT Ops. Well, don't be intimidated by that name, although it sounds a lot like covert ops, secret ops, maybe even black ops. It's not. In programming, we have exciting things called addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, stuff like that. And it makes for very exciting video, but um, no danger, no peril, so just don't worry yet. Um, so for to demonstrate um, JIT Ops, we're going to need two videos. So let's get them from uh, in a new way, a different way than I showed you in the last tutorial. Just click on this thing that says video, and you'll get a window. It'll show all the videos in Max's search path. These are mine, so you probably won't have those, but if you keep scrolling down, we get a whole bunch of videos that come um, stock with Max. So let's pull out a B ball and let it go there, and it automatically makes a playlist for you. Okay, and just to show you how playlist works, I'll just take a moment here and do this again, scrolling down, and let's just say that you wanted to make a playlist here that also had chickens in it, because we love chickens. Um, if you hold the chickens over b-ball right in the middle, you see the whole square, uh, the whole rectangle lights up, that would replace b-ball. But if you pull it down a little bit, you just get that one line, and that makes it a playlist. So I'm going to let go of it now. However, you may have noticed that the loop um, option disappears when you do that. Don't worry, the whole thing still works, you just have to make it a lot bigger to get the, there we go, just keep making it bigger, and then you get the loop icon back and you'll be able to loop whichever movie you decide to play. Okay, so now we do have two videos here but we can only play one at a time and we need to play two videos at a time. So let's go get Another one here over in video, scrolling down. Um, I'm going to get countdown because countdown shows off your operations very well. And just for balance, I'm going to make it as big as the other one, but it doesn't need to be. Um, so there we go. We've got our two videos. And now we're going to combine them with a thing called JIT Ops. The J I T is for jitter and Ops whoa, is for Oper operands, operations, plus, minus, etc. We'll see them in a minute. Okay, so instead of typing the letter N, as we often do to get a new object, let's type the letter J, and you'll notice that we get a new object, and it already has the JIT typed in it. And now start typing OPS. O, P, uh, excuse me, OP, just OP, <laughs> in the singular. Okay, so we're it can actually do multiple operations, just by the way. We might even get to that. Okay, so good old JIT op. And then we're going to need um, something to watch it on. So we're going to type a J again. And we're going to type P window. There, it just comes up right away. Patch our window. And you get, this is a resizable window that you can use in your patcher. And um, before we make this one big, let's just get two little ones. So option click on that, and we'll put one of those as a sort of monitor screen um, under each one of these. I like to hold the shift key down to keep them in scale. You'll notice that you can make these any size, right? Whoa, don't do that. There we go. Almost any size. We don't want it to be any size. We want it to be in scale. So I hold the shift key down. And now, no matter where I move the mouse, it kind of keeps it in scale. So let's just make it a reasonable size and let go of it. Then we'll option click on it and move another one over here. Now, a quick rule in jitter. In, yes, jitter. Video. You never have video. Um, video can go to as many destinations as you want from the same source. So this outlet can have two um, patchers, uh, uh, patch cords coming out of it. That is not weird. But what you can never do 
is have two video patch cords going in the same inlet. They conflict with each other and usually it's just luck of the draw. One usually um, overrides the other, but they make a real mess and you can never do that. If you see this, it is wrong, right? Again, you can have this coming out to here, which is where it's supposed to go, and you could conceivably have this coming out to here, um, which is fine, but then if you try to connect this to this, you are once again in bad shape because you have two video patch cords coming in the same outlet. Never happens, okay? That's a rule. It never happens. So just delete that cord, oh, excuse me, delete this cord and everything is back to being okay. Again, you can have um, two different patch cords coming out of the same outlet, but only one video patch cord can come in an inlet. You just, the way to mix a video is you have to get a, an object to mix them together, and that's what JITOP does. Okay, hey, let's make this our main big window. I'm going to hold the shift key down again to keep it in scale and make it big. There we go. So we should be ready to go here. Oops, almost ready to go here. Let's put one more thing in here. And that is our attribute um, object. So type an N and then type at Truy. There we go. And then it has nothing on its mind yet but it soon will. Now, this is a data cord. That's okay. You can have a data cord going in the same place as a video cord. Just can't have two video cords. Are we clear on this yet? I know, you're bored. Okay, good, fine. Happy to hear it. All right, so lock your patcher, and then we're going to click on this, and we're going to say it's all about op. Okay, and right now it's just passing. So we're going to play the basketball movie and turn on the loop. We're going to put the countdown and turn on the loop. And right now, because it's passing, the um, it's just going to let this one, uh, the first video, pass and the second one not. But now, if we come up here and we say multiply them together, so I'm going to take the uh, vi this video times this video equals what? Well, black is zero in in a numerical sense. So zero times anything is going to be zero. So black times anything ends up being zero, and white times well this is uh, so, and white is one, so it'll end up being exactly the color it was before if you're multiplying. And gray will be half as bright. See, it all makes sense for the moment. Okay, and then dividing, um, you know, <laughs> uh, divide by zero or zero divided by that, oh, is problematic because I think it's an infinitely small or infinitely large number. It doesn't like it. Um, plus, Sounds like it's going to be bright, right? Well, luckily, zero plus anything just ends up being itself. So this plus the black zero is pretty dull. White is one. So in one plus whatever's behind it, it's going to end up being white or brighter than white, which is hard to get. But this gray, as we can see again, lightens everything up a little bit. Okay. So we can go through the operators and uh, and see what they do. Now we're subtracting um, uh, this minus um, white is going to be uh, black or very uh, close to black and minus gray makes it quite a bit darker. Now here's some interesting ones that you might not know. When you see an exclamation point in front of an operand that means you switch places so that in, if, if this means, let's call this A divided by B, this means B is going to be divided by A. So instead of the basketball movie being 
divided by countdown movie. It's countdown movie divided by basketball movie. Still <laughs> rather dark, but um, that's what it means when you see that sign. So here we have exclamation point minus. That means countdown movie minus basketball movie. And there we have it. So um, countdown movie, which is black, minus this is going to be less than zero. And white minus this is going to be the inverse, right? So instead of saying, uh, you know, 10 minus 2, it's 10 minus 8. Well, excuse me, 1 minus 0.8. So it ends up being negative colors. Cool. I love JIT ops already. Memory, what could it be? Um, it keeps in its memory for a short time this white, but then it's fading as it goes around, and it's adding that to the colors behind it. Um, so anyway, we have all these um, possibilities, absolute difference, you know. Um, if you take one, subtract it from the other, and then make it a positive number. Uh, absolute, well, not okay. Average, somewhere in between, okay, gotcha. Anyway, you can explore these yourself. Um, so here we had pass, where we get only the basketball movie, and now exclamation point pass, you can probably guess what that's going to be. Yep, just the uh, second movie. So when you see the exclamation point, it substitutes the second operator for the first operator. For the first, the second input for the first input, and uses whatever operators there. And then a lot of these are sort of logical um, operators that I will be very honest, I can hardly tell you what would happen if you use uh, greater than greater than it, uh, I, I believe it, but it doesn't make any sense to me. You know. Anyway, a lot of them are just for sort of exploring. Mm, nice effect. I like it. So that is uh, JIT op, and then I'm just going to show you um, a sort of cool thing about JIT op. Let's unlock our patcher here, and we're going to need a little bit of extra space here. So I'm going to move these apart. And that is that the, the um, jitter P window and the jitter matrix have four matrices, one laid over the other, and so you can actually adjust them separately. Now, it would be a little bit of a pain in the neck for us to do that. Right now, this is just adjusting all of them to be the same thing. So if I put this on, um, you know, plus, then they're all on plus. So how can we make them separate? We, we are going to do the thing that we do best, which is steal, copy, if you will. And so let's um, click right on the JIT op object push your option key down and click on that and you'll get the JIT op help file and then go over here here's the list of the operators and what they do in case you're interested in that but over here it says using multiple operators they have a way to do that where they pack they've made a U menu of each of the of the um, planes and you can pack them uh, oops. Uh, well, well, we'll do it when we get down there. Um, you can pack each one of them separately. Of course, these are exactly the same movies, so there's no point in uh, uh, seeing what the difference between the two are. You can see they're running at a different speed. Whoops. Anyway, let's unlock our patcher and copy this group of things. Just those. Okay. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to say, uh, copy that for on a Mac is command C on a PC I believe is control C and I'm just going to close the window and then I'm going to come down here and paste it there it is let's just put this up here get rid of our a truey object and connect to this down here so we now know that 
for all of these commands. The, the uh, word that you prepend it with is op. Uh, the pak, P-A-K, is a special sort of version of pack that any time you change any one of the inputs, it outputs all the inputs at the same time. So it just doesn't do, it doesn't need the left one to, to send it, to, to cause it to output. If you change anything, it outputs. So here we go. So um, right now we have um, A, R, G, B, and they're all passing. So that means that uh, uh, we get everything from the basketball film. Um, Alpha channel's not really going to do a whole lot, but let's just um, see what happens if we change the red to, um, oh, let's just say um, backwards. We'll get all the red from the countdown movie. So there we go. So full red coming in, where it is quote unquote white on the countdown movie, and then none of the red is coming in from the basketball movie, which makes it seem a little blue. Um, we can keep doing that, uh, passing on the other one. And now we're, I guess, uh, let's see, RG, this would be it. adding green from the countdown movie. Yes. So red and green makes yellow in light. And now the only thing that's coming in from the basketball movie is the blue the last one. So this is all making sense in its own weird way. And now we'll add the blue in and look at that. We get what essentially looks like the countdown movie again. And like I said, alpha, I've experimented with it. I don't really just get a whole lot of alpha because all it's doing is changing the amount of, uh, the uh, amount of transparency and since you're already passing it's not going to make any difference oh I change it to something else so I, I don't find this makes a huge difference but you know maybe maybe it does on some front I don't know anyway I've been messing around with it for a while I didn't notice that it does much anyway but with these you can actually change you could say oh well I'm going to multiply the reds I'm going to um, divide the greens and I'm going to subtract the blues, let's say. Hey, there's no subtract. Where's subtract? Hey, that's funny. Well, we'll have to settle. Huh. No subtract. We have to do it backwards. Subtract memory. We'll try it. There we go. So, um, there we are, subtracting blue. <clears throat> um, if that's really a thing. Um, anyway, you can separate them and do them differently uh, in the different planes that are in the matrix. Anyway, so that's what you can do with JetOps. Lots of different stuff to get lots of weird effects. Um, and I think that's enough for now. I thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.